Oh man, oh man, this is it, this is it. This is where the answers to like his, the questions about his people, about everything that he ever questioned about Solus, like about anything, anything, it's all culminating, right? The fact, hope, the fact that maybe he's about to die and he doesn't know, like, you know, like can Solus help him or will he help him? Who knows, who knows? Oh man, oh man. Oh buddy. Ah, blah. Oh man, so strange seeing Talon here. And yet, perfect, like we've been through so long with Talon. Like it's so good to just have another story that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna finish. Find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. Ever seat Kata, it were Ost. Maras Kata. Your forces have failed. Leave now and tell the Canari to trouble me no further. My heart's still Solus. beating kind of quick, but it's different with Talon. I like it. I like the difference. We are approaching things differently. That should give us more time. I suspect you have questions. You bet. Oh, yes! I got it! I got it! Yes! <laughs> yes! All right. Maybe you only need three out of four. Or, or I picked it up. I don't know. Yay! Can I please have the cool wolf sentinel armor? I know, right? That's the important question. All right. Here we go. Here we go! The Kunari answered some of those questions. The information I found while traveling this through the Nubians answered more. You're Fen Harel. You're the Dread Wolf. <gasps> well done. <gasps> I was Solus first. Fen Harel came later. Oh, yes! An insult I took as a badge of pride. The Dread Wolf inspired hope in my friends and fear in my enemies. Not unlike Inquisitor, I suppose. You also know the burden of a title that all but replaces your name. Wow. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> Have questions. Oh, that was perfect for Talon. I loved it. Like, he's put together, like, you could say, like, he's, from what he's discovered in the Alluvians, yes, but, like, everything that he's kind of, any slight suspicions that he had while knowing Solas, like, and I like that here he can approach Solas as an equal, because I feel like their relationship at least for Talon, he saw Solos as an equal no matter what. And maybe Solos didn't see Talon as an equal at first, but I feel like their relationship gradually progressed to where Solos did see him as an equal, you know? And they were surprised, like Solos was surprised to consider Talon a friend, you know? And, and everything, and so I feel like this is perfect. This is perfect. Okay. So I don't know, ooh, I don't know. Oh, I should have saved before this. Uh, uh, hmm. I kind of, I think I did that with Erica. Because she was trying to make it, you know, she was trying to be like, you know, oh, so you're like this, like trying to be on his level. I feel like Erica constantly felt like she was never on the same level as Solas. That's the difference between her and Talon, especially, is that Solas treats, or Talon treats Solas as an equal, but Erica was constantly always reaching towards Solas and never felt like she was good enough. I know you're not evil, do we know? I think, I think we would think we know he was, he's not evil, you know? Mm. And, uh, oh man. Let's try. 
Our legends about you are wrong. I saw the truth as we traveled the crossroads. Ah. You saw another story, written in desperation to give me more credit than I ever deserved. You were a hero, Solus. I sought to set my people free like from that. slavery like to would-be gods. I broke the chains of all who wished to join me. The false gods called me Fenharel, and when they finally went too far, I formed a veil and banished them forever. Thus I freed the elven people, and in so doing, destroyed their world. That would be another way to approach it. I mean, I don't know, I don't know, maybe... I might have to go back and test the other ones just because I don't know um, how they all turned out. But you could, we could look at it as going through and being like like Talon having to realize that the legends about the Dread Wolf are wrong as we're going, and then being like, but the story he's reading is like, well, holy crap! Like the the Dread Wolf is is a hero. Like he did he did what he needed to do. You know, he's like he's like me, sort of like he was thrust into a role maybe that he didn't really want. But he tried to save the people by doing so, you know. The friend route works for Kieran as well. That's why I said to stop it at all costs. Yeah, I'll do everything in your power to save you from yourself. I like that too. All right. Well, we're gonna we're definitely gonna ask all the questions because I want to hear it again for Talon. Um. You banished the false gods. You didn't kill them. You met Mithol, did you not? The first of my people do not die so easily. The Evanuris are banished forever, paying the ultimate price for their misdeeds. You love the Fade. Why would you create the Veil to hide it all away? Because every alternative was worse. Meaning? Had I not created the Veil, the Evanuris would have destroyed the entire world. You said that the Elven Gods went too far. What did they do that made you move against them? They killed Mithal. <laughs> Crime for which an eternity of torment is the only fitting punishment. I thought Mithal was one of the Evanuris. She was the best. I like of them. this. I like hearing this she from Talon's point of view. She protected them. She was a voice of reason. And in their lust for power, they killed her. The Evanuris were elven mages. How did they come to be remembered as gods? Slowly. It started with a war. War breeds fear. Fear breeds a desire for simplicity. Good and evil, right and wrong, chains of command. After the war ended, generals became respected elders, then kings, finally gods, the Evanuris. How did creating the Veil destroy the world? I you love saw all the these remains questions. of Eadathara. The library was intrinsically tied to the Fade, and the Veil destroyed it. There were countless other marvels, all dependent on the presence of the Fade. This had to all destroy this him on the inside. Your legends are half right. We were immortal. It was not the arrival of humans that caused us to begin aging. It was me. The Veil took everything from the elves. Even themselves. Did he know? Does he, does he mention that he knew that there were going to be those side effects? Or did he just, did he know the side effects, but the, but the, it would be, the alternative was better than anything else? Um, like all these, all these side effects were going to be better than them being completely destroyed, but now he's like, just kidding, I don't like it anymore. That's the past. What about the future? I lay in dark and dreaming sleep while countless wars and ages passed. I woke he still weak and before I joined you. My people fell for what I did to strike the Evanuris down. But still, some hope remains for restoration. I will save the Elven people, even if it means this world must die. Yeah, you can, you can agree with him. Hmm. I think he knew it was going to be bad, but you don't know whether he knew the specifics. I mean, he says, yeah, that this alternative was better. I think he knew it was going to be bad, but he probably didn't know the exact specifics and how it would react. And he had to learn that slowly. So, part of me thinks that he will. he's going to save the elven people. I don't think he means he's going to bring back the ancient elves, but he wants to save the current elves. 
from what he did. And I think by this, if we're going to be speaking really like metaphorically, I think what he means by this world is that our current mindset, the current mindset of the current world is one that is somewhat stunted from what it could be. So when he says, like, I'm going to burn everything, whatever, 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 I don't think that tearing the veil down is actually going to bring fire and chaos to everything, like, necessarily, you know? I think what it's going to do is it's going to change our world irrevocably. It's going to change our world views irrevocably. It's going to change the physical world irrevocably by destroying it sort of but not like fire and flames right it's just gonna completely change the way we think about things thereby destroying how we viewed and interacted with the world beforehand so while it sounds really dramatic right now i don't think he means actual fire and brimstone that's very generous of me i know right stone smith and that's the thing that's what happens when people are trying to justify solus's actions is that he's speaking metaphorically for all i know he's speaking literally i don't know and if he is i can't allow that to happen uh let's do this one solus whatever you want this world dying is not the answer Ooh, i like it not a good answer no eh. sometimes terrible choices are all that remain it is my fight you should be more concerned about the inquisition your inquisition you're gonna tear down my world and I shouldn't breath, worry about it? An invasion by Canari forces. Yeah, but you're gonna blow everything up? With luck, they will return their focus to Devinter. That should give you a few years So it's gonna take him a peace. few years to get his plans together, right? You know what I mean? It's not gonna happen soon. Whatever he wants to do is still gonna take a while. But the fact that he's let a lot of stuff slip to me just shows just shows that he wants to be stopped to me like he doesn't actually want to go through with whatever he's planning otherwise it wouldn't matter it wouldn't matter that's why i don't think he's gonna burn the world with fire and brimstone is because it wouldn't matter if the canari forces took us over then again it could be like, like he says later he's like i want you all to die in relative peace and not under slaves under the canari or whatever you know so maybe for old time's sake or his old friends, he's trying to give us a few more years of peace before what happens has to, before he, what he thinks has to happen, happens. You know what I mean? So it could be some weird sense of kindness that he has, that he's trying to save us even just for a few more years before everything has to go to crap. But I also think that the world he wants to save isn't one that's controlled by the Kuhn. So he could just be like, no, let's not do the Kuhn thing. What I have to do won't work if we let the Kuhn take over. You know what I mean? Uh, no, he literally means spirits are gonna flood the earth. But they're not- he doesn't want them to turn into demons. He doesn't want- the, he doesn't want the spirits to turn into demons. They're- the, the, the worlds used to be tied together. The worlds used to be one. I think it's gonna be reverting it back to his natural state. However, I don't think that's gonna come with no chaos. I think some spirits are gonna panic and turn into demons. And I think a lot of people who are even a little bit magic sensitive are gonna have a lot of problems and perhaps turn into abominations. But I don't think he wants to turn all the spirits into demons. There's no point to that. I am, I am reaching and I'm trying to see the best of the end of the world, but I, you can't, I can't. Knowing Solus, Talon and Erica both, knowing Solus like we do, I can't think that he would actually try to do that. Try to do the whole fire and brimstone completely. Like, yes, yeah, sometimes you have to, to build something new, you have to tear it down, and you have to cleanse things with fire, so I can't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if it has to turn out that way, if he sees it that way, but I, for now, I honestly can't see him wanting to do things in such a way. The Canaries said the Inquisition was unknowingly working for agents of Fen Harel. I gave no orders. You led us to Skyhold. Corypheus should have died unlocking my orb. When he survived, my plans were thrown into chaos. When you survived, I saw the Inquisition as the best hope this world had of stopping him. And you needed a home. Hence, Skyhold. Uh, 
Oh shoot! If I, I think if I choose one of these, it's gonna, it won't let me come back to these. Love is blind springs to mind. He doesn't want it to happen because of the fact it's been separate for so long. What I, okay, what I'm really liking though, aside from all me trying to justify Solus's actions, what I really like about this encounter with Solus and Talon is that I honestly feel like Talon is on the same level as Solus. Like, they are speaking as equals. Erica never was able to quite feel like that. Even if Solus saw her as an equal, she never saw herself as an equal to Solus. So, this is interesting. I like it. You gave your orb to Corypheus. Not directly. My agents allowed the Vanatori to locate it. The orb had built up magical energy while I lay unconscious for millennia. I was not powerful enough to open it. The plan was for Corypheus to unlock it, and for the so resulting explosion was, was to kill him. So he was directing them from the then fade, I would claim the orb. I did not foresee a Divinta Magister having learned the secret of effective immortality. Well, he just he controlled the blight, which is something that Solus didn't have, they didn't have back then. So he wouldn't know anything about the blight, really, and its, its capabilities. What would have happened if Corypheus had died and you had recovered the orb? I would have entered the Fade using the mark you now bear. Then I would have torn down the veil. As this world burned in the raw chaos, I would have restored the world of my time. The world of the elves. See, and this is, yeah, that's the, uh, it's like, as the world burned in the raw chaos, and it's like, but I just have to wonder if it's the chaos of people reacting to the fate and the veil coming back, or if it actually is the two worlds colliding that haven't been together for millennia will actually cause, because we saw what happened when Corypheus tried to tear down the veil, like, the world was ripped asunder, you know? So that's the thing, is I, I don't know, I, I'm reaching but I won't be surprised if it's not how I'm hoping it's gonna turn out. Uh, you killed the world. Well, you and Corypheus survived the unlocking, so it was a pretty bad plan. Yeah, well, that's the thing is, Solus keeps trying to fix mistakes. He keeps trying to fix his mistakes, and he keeps creating even bigger and bigger mistakes. Like, it's. It just makes. It drives you crazy. You wanna shake him. You're like, do you even see what you're doing? The fact that you tried to fix the world before, turned it into the mess that it is now, even though it's okay, like it's fine now, things need to change, but it's not bad, but now he wants to fix it again? And it's like, your track record is really bad, Solus. Please stop trying to fix the world. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> if you destroyed the veil, wouldn't the false gods be freed? I had plans. I had plans. So at least some of the stories about the Dread Wolf are true. I did not lead a rebellion against immortal mage kings without getting my hands bloody. Interesting. You must understand. I awoke in a world where the veil had blocked most people's conscious connection to the Fade. It was like walking through a world of tranquil. We aren't even people to you. Not at first. You showed me that I was wrong. Again! 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 That does not make what must come next any easier. Don't you put your Solace! It's literally both the people and the two worlds. Yeah, it, I mean, yeah, it's Who knows what it's gonna be and who know, when I don't know if Dragon Age 4 is gonna take place in the years leading up to Solace's act or if it's gonna take place like right beforehand and the culmination will be Solus's action or whatever it's gonna be. It'll be interesting to see where Dragon Age 4 is placed. He only knows how to fix things in extreme fashion, but he doesn't fix anything. He doesn't fix them, he makes them worse. <laughs> Last time, don't mess with that right there. Uh, I think I chose thanks, I guess. Uh, see, and Talon here isn't be like Erica was just like so happy to see, but also broken hearted to see him. But I think Talon is kind of poking and prodding a little bit with Solus still. Like, he's like, So I guess some of the stories are true. And Solus kind of narrows his eyes at him, right? Like, but Talon isn't afraid of Solus. Like, even though he's this crazy great god, like, Talon is not i mean he respects and you know he respects him and respects the fear or respects the power he has but he's not afraid of him 
He's too powerful is a problem he can't think small, yeah. Tries to do things well but without success, doing harm to people trying to do well is what hurts the most. Yeah, yeah. I mean that the yeah, he's just uh it's a mess and he's he's a mess. So this was in reaction to him saying something about the Inquisition being mine. Mm, shoot, uh... Let's, let's do that one. For whatever it's worth, thanks for the castle. <laughs> for whatever it's worth, you used it well. Well, thanks! <laughs> okay, that was interesting, that was cool. For whatever it's worth, thanks for... I feel like Talon's like, he's like so mind blown, like he's, he's keeping it cool, right? But like, and that's it, like, he's not even like, his mind isn't blown, he's processing things very quickly, and so he's like, he's like, he's like, uh, oh, what's the word, he's, uh, compartmentalizing everything, so all he can say there is just like, well, thanks for the castle. <laughs> I love it. He does solve the problem, just not the bet. Yeah, I guess that's true. You control the illusion. This is gonna be now. different. Yes. You remember Briala from Halam Shiral? For a time, she controlled part of the labyrinth. One of my agents was supposed to take it from her. Felisan. But he did not that succeed. That was Felisan from the book. I had to override the magic personally. The Canari stumbled upon this section independently. Okay, so that wasn't different. With them gone, hmm. the Illuvians are now mine. I thought it might, I thought it was gonna be a little different because we have Briala. Well, I guess if we, last time I had Briala with Celine ruling jointly, and now Briala is pulling the strings from Gaspard. But I think if Briala is not in any position of power, then it, the, the conversation goes a little differently. What's wrong with the Inquisition? You created a powerful organization. And now it suffers the inevitable fate of science. Yeah, you betrayed me, Solus! And corruption. You betrayed me! It's not that simple. Do you know how I discovered the Canari plot? The plot I disrupted by leading them to your doorstep. The Canari spies in the Inquisition tripped over my spies in the Inquisition. The Elven Guard who led you to the Canari body? Yes. Who intercepted the Yeah, the other the one works for the Cune. Mine. And the guard who just led me to the Canari body, that was Solus's person. It's true, if you think logically all of a sudden he cuts out the root of the problem, it just has an exponential but that's the thing is he doesn't he's not he's not a god. He's not actually able to think through all of the possible outcomes for his actions. But then again, is inaction any better? You know, I can't fault him. He's trying he he's trying he's trying the best he knows how, you know? Why bother disrupting the Kunari plot if you're going to destroy the world regardless? You have shown me that there is value in this world, Inquisitor. I take no joy in what I must do. Until that day comes, I would see those recovering from the breach free of the Cune. He Why? really hates the Cune. Because I am not a monster. If they must die, I would rather they die in comfort. They're not gonna die in comfort, in Solas! It is done. They're not gonna die in comfort because they're gonna be burning alive in fade magic! Why are the Welsh ones always bad? No! Uh, let's see... So you let us do your dirty work. The mistake was yours to fix, Inquisitor. What, what mistake? Which one? I don't remember what we were talking about. Shoot. Uh, I don't know. There's still the matter of the anchor. It's getting worse. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> And we are almost out of time. Oh my gosh! The monk will eventually kill you. Drawing you here gave me the chance to save you. At least for now. It's like on my face! will stop Solus even if it means killing him. The Inquisition will try to convince Solus to change his plans. Oh shoot, guys. 
I feel like Talon would actually... Kayuk, same thing as you. Him and Solus were friends, right? But he has to stop Solus no matter what. Oh, crap. I was planning on going with the redeem option. But I feel like even though it would be... It would give Talon great sorrow. He would say, I can't let you do this. Yeah, I can't let you do this. Oh, my God. No. And it's not out of maliciousness. It's not out of anger. It's literally sorrow that Talon will be carrying for the rest of his life. That we will stop him, even if it means killing him. Yeah, no punch option. We were too friendly. Oh my gosh. And I feel like at this point, while Talon had... He... The thing, the, the, the personal quest with Leliana showed him that he doesn't always have to operate from the shadows, that he has a chance of being saved. Like, he doesn't have to always be this hardened, you know, man operating from the shadows or something. But I feel like at this point, he feels like it's probably his only option to stop Solus. Right. Talon would do whatever it takes to save his friend, even if it means killing you. Yeah. Yeah. But and then, like, with Erika, it's sort of the same way. She'll redeem him even if it means killing him or herself. But for Talon, I think it would be the thing we've discussed before where like he takes his own blade to kill his friend in order to save him, you know? Oh my gosh. All right. The Inquisition will stop Solus even if it means killing him. If I live, I'm coming to stop you. <gasps> I know. Take my hand. You! Oh my gosh! I'm sorry. Live well while time remains. Oh my gosh! That was intense! That was intense! Solus is just like, I know. Oh my gosh! And that was like Talon saying. If I live, I'm going to come and stop you. Not I'm going to kill you, but I'm going to stop you. Oh my gosh, that was cool. It's an option for equals. Yeah, Kai, I feel that too. I feel that too. I like it. I like that option. That was good. <laughs> that was good. Three, something must be done. But we cannot lose the Inquisition now. We stand on the brink of war with the Canari. Yes, because this Solas provoked them in the first place. We apologize for not informing the summit beforehand. We were concerned. Oh, Talon. Talon's coming were. in for business. 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 Organization. <laughs> our organization, you would not be allowed to complain. No one has forgotten what you have done. But Corypheus is two years dead. If the Inquisition is to continue, it must do so as a legitimate My arm! Not a glorified no! Inquisitor. Oh, snap. Another big decision after the one we just made. Yes, that was Little Squirrel. She coughed. No, we're not going to work for Leliana, I don't think. We serve, okay, we serve the Divine. Here, okay, here's our options. Inquisition will serve Divine Victoria. If efforts against souls will be stronger, but risk corruption. We will keep the peace. We'll serve Divine Victoria. We need more oversight. Um, <coughs> Inquisition. I think, what I kind of think is it would kind of make sense to go work for Leliana. At the same time, I feel like Talon wants to go back. He, the being in charge of the big Inquisition and the words that Sola said struck a severe blow. Well, struck, struck some chords in like his heart saying like he needs to go, Talon needs to go back to his roots sort of. He needs to go back to the shadows. He needs to operate where he can see, where he can know the information beforehand. He needs to go back to what he was in a way. And the Inquisition, I feel like he was going to try to keep it together in the beginning. Like at first he was like, we're not done yet. You know, we still got things to do. But this, seeing the corruption in his organization, it just kind of solidified the idea that they need to just, he just needs to, it needs to be done. The Inquisition he sees now that the Inquisition did its job, did its work, and now we need a new weapon, a new tool to approach this new problem. And the Inquisition is not it. 
you know? Talon works from the shadows, yeah. So does Leliana, technically. So either our work is done or we'll solve this ourselves. Yeah. Uh, I actually really like, oh, I did that with Erica, which was funny because it's the only time I ever took the angry option. Oh, interesting. You love the angry? I do too. I love the angry disbanding. I think I'm going to have to choose it again because I really liked it. Talon reminds me of a young Paul Newman. Nice. All right. I can see that. I can see that, Larry. Let's do the angry one. I like it. Uh, I mean, I can see Talon being, like, sort of at peace with his with his decisions, too, right here, and going the uh, work is done route, but, oh, man, I don't know. Uh, I do like the angry one. You all know what this is. A writ from Divine Justinia authorizing the formation of the Inquisition. We pledge to close the breach, find those responsible, and Now he just wants to get order. down to business, you With know? without anyone's approval. He just, he just wants to do what needs to be done. It wasn't a formally authorized treaty that saved Ferelden's people. And he's so sick of these guys trying to... It he's sick of being manipulated. It wasn't careful diplomacy that ended your inane civil war. It was never about the organization. It was about people doing oh what was boy. necessary. Oh, my boy! My Talon! Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a world to save. Again. Oh, my gosh! My Effect boy! immediately. The Inquisition is disbanded. Oh, heck yes! Oh, so good! So good! I liked that. That was I love it. It's so good. Yay. <laughs> My friends, Dory, you better not just saunter off. You got to you got to the one-armed archer is going to save the world. This will go well. <laughs> Dorian, don't just slide off. You have to stand with me. So drop the mic was born. Oh yeah, that feels such a good moment. They did trespassers so well. Really good emotional moments. No, oh, he's back! Yay, he came back! <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> All right, wow. The short order was disbanded. Some were relieved to see the unpredictable organization dismantled. All of them. I love them all. I know, right? Uh, the peoples. I love them. Others preferred to remember the Inquisition's good works and the many lives it had saved. I think they've slowed down this ending credits because last time it was like <laughs> really fast. Those who would serve return to their former lives, knowing they'd stopped a great evil from destroying the world. I feel like Talon's gonna be much more at home operating from the shadows too. Like, going back, going back into the shadows and observing from a distance. And hoping that the peace for which they had fought remained once the Inquisition was gone. Or like being in the thick of things, but nobody knowing he's there. Like not having to keep up face or anything. Just being able to be in the shadows, like he like he always has. The dragon's breath disrupted in any hope of a swift victory dash, the Canari retreated back to the north. You gotta listen to Cassandra. Oh yeah, we're listening to Cassandra's. Few knew what debates were raging in Parpolin, but not long after these on the council, the Canari launched new attacks against Deventer. We gotta we gotta protect Deventer because Dorian's there. already caught the unstable Imperium off guard, to render a soon mired in a war that many fear could spread across Thanos. I don't get the bull sex Dorian ending. What? Since the council remained intact, advising to and Victoria on the important matters, Cassandra served for several years. While also doing the seeker thing. She often disagreed with Leliana's policies. The former right and the left hand shared a mutual respect and worked well together. Is the bull safe 
did Dorian ending happen if they romance each other? Sandra spent time in the Hunter Horn Mountains and worked the whole way where she worked to rebuild the Seekers. Nice, so they're building, they're actually like building something out there. That music threw me right back into Erica's head for a second there. I had to, I had to get out of, I had to get out of Erica's head as soon as I heard that music and get back into Talon's. With the Inquisition at an end as it once had been, a few surviving mages who had served it found themselves with nowhere to go. Did we side? Yeah, we sided with the Templars this time. The Divine had declared the circle over, but something needed to take its place. What you gonna do, Vivian? Vivian led many of the old guard to form a new circle, surprising absolutely no one when it immediately elected her as Grand Enchanter. The remainder of positions veteran mages formed a rival organization. Okay, so that's how we do the College of Enchanters. When I was having with the mages last time, they formed the College of Enchanters, and the old circle popped up led by Vivian as a, as a response. The two institutions settled into an uneasy coexistence across the South, vying for power. I mean, as long as there, I think two are good, you know? Like, you need to have some sort of organization, but... After the Zelda Council, Liliana devoted herself fully to the Sunburst Throne and her dream of reshaping the Chantry. Also, giving the mages two options is better than being forced into the circle like last time, you know? So at least now they have they can choose to be in the circle or they can choose to be in the college. Oh, I've already got a character for that I'm making for the Bull Dorian romance. It's my uh, Kunari who's romancing Sarah. The Kree follows Sophie by decision to return the count the Canticle of Shardakan to the canonical chant and move that divided Andrastians deeply. Okay, there was there was a decree that I missed. I don't know. A rebellion to renounce her and return the change to its former state arose, beginning first in Orlais, then spreading to other parts of Thetis. The Chantry needed to change, regardless of what was going to happen to it, it needed to change. Okay, she was resolute, holding her ground even after several unsuccessful attempts on her life. Do the halls run with blood in this one? With a hardened Liliana, they run the halls run with blood. Seemingly unconcerned with the assassination attempts, she held up the hostility leveled against her as proof that she was on the right path. Okay, yeah, it was different with the, uh, with, with the other one. Sarah left the Inquisition with scarcely more ties than when she began disappearing back into her confusing weave of favors and friends. Yeah, I didn't get to be Sarah's friend this time. I'm sad. After seeing the royal brought to brink by arrogance and pride, it was a blessing to return to normal, however strange a normal it might be. With frequent visits to her widow, I am glad that that happens, no matter what. It's cute. But then they auto attempted her life are no problem. Yeah. Perhaps most unnerving was Sarah standing off her to the divine, which she does not give if Vivian is, uh, she gives it to Cassandra or Leliana. She does not give this offer to a Vivian divine. When the nobs, <laughs> whoa, I was, I, was, I was gonna say the nobles. The nobles, uh, mess about with your left or under right, call on Red Jenny to give them two fingers. Poke their eyes out and pull an arrow into their eyeball. Beric returned to Kirkwall, where his Viscount he resumed his work on rebuilding the damaged, the damaged city infrastructure. But without Hawk. Last time I had, Hawk was with him. Which is one of the reasons I'm thinking about having my cannon Hawk jump into the Fade, because um, I really don't like the idea of my Hawk going back to Kirkwall like that. I don't think she would. I think she'd, she'd wander the hills of the free marches with Anders, you know? She wouldn't just go back to Kirkwall, because Kirkwall, Anders couldn't go to Kirkwall. Anders wouldn't be allowed in Kirkwall after what he did. With the Inquisition disbanded, the Bulls' chargers returned to taking jobs throughout Orlais and Ferelden. I'm so happy for Bull. 
Fighting demons and clearing out the remains of Venatory forces, the Iron Bull did his part to restore order in Thetis. <laughs> it's so good! <laughs> ah. After the Inquisition disbanded, Colin retired from active service because I will never make Colin keep taking Lyrium ever. Ever. Colin will never have to take Lyrium ever again. At, with me. I, I can't do it. He returned to Ferelden, establishing a sanctuary for former Templars, a land Divine Victoria granted to him. With his help, many Templars shed their Lyrium addiction, and those whose minds were too far gone spent their last days in comfort. I really like that. Colin is a type of guy who likes to take care of people in his own way, you know? And so this is, this is a good retirement for him. And he promised should the should his friends from the old religion ever need him, his blade would be ready. I think he might show up in the next game, but he won't be he won't be like vitally important, you know. Good, never do that. I know. Dorian returns to Venture to take his father's place in the Magisterium. <laughs> As rumors flew about the Imperium's infighting, Dorian was spoken of often as a voice of resistance against corruption. Along with Magister Maverus Talani, he formed a group called the Lune Charony to restore and redeem Deventer, a fight many thought hopeless. He looks so interesting, older. Look at him. Magister Pivus' ally said that his greatest strength lay in the lover he left in the south, but still conversed with via message crystal. <laughs> I love her. Some claim to have seen the Inquisitor on the streets of Minrathus on rare occasions, sneaking into the heart of Tevinter to aid his armada. Yes! Yes, I love that! We used the Luvians to go see him! Guaranteed! Guaranteed we use the Luvians to go and help Dorian. Oh, I love it. After the Exalted Council, Tom Rainier bid farewell to his friends and with device helped Fortress to fled himself to the Grey Wardens for good. That was so nice with Dorian. While he was rarely seen in the years that followed, since so they encountered Rainier in far flung lands, their accounts always similar. help others along the way. And that's what the wardens should do. He lived with the ideal of being a warden for so long that it's given him strength against what corruption was there. Sometimes he served as a ship of defenseless, other times he spread, spread simple cheer among children with gifts of small carved toys. <laughs> When the Inquisition disbanded, Josephine made her farewells and returned to Antiva and her family. Apparently, if you do the one Leliana's way for Josephine's mission, it changes the ending slides a little bit. In a good way, not a bad way. Thanks to the Inquisitor's help, the Montiliers were once again permitted to trade in Orlais. Heck yeah. The next few years were a busy time, as many ships with the Montillier crest were built and set sail again from Antiva's harbors. I'm so happy. I hope that these guys, they all, I don't know. It seems like they want to be involved in whatever happens next. But at the same time, it's nice to know that they can have a life outside of the Inquisition. Ravani pirate captains with an ancient feud against Josephine's ancestors for the cities. Hogal. Apart from Josephine's sister, Yvette, nearly eloping with a dashing pirate prince on one occasion, Lady Montelier took the development in stride. We'll have to get Isabella to talk to them. Go to the road, man, and to find a new life and a new way to be human! Oh, I'm so happy! This is different for me, for sure. Last time he went back to the Fade to talk to Solas. Wherever Meriden went to sing, people found old pains eased and hearts made happier, even if they didn't understand why. Oh man, that's such a good couple too. I like, I like that. I like that a lot. After the events of the Winter Palace, elves of the Inquisition under mysterious circumstances as did elven servants across Thetis. Even the Dalish, like that's what confuses me. The Dalish League too? Like, surely some of them wouldn't want to. 
None could say where they went, but those who believe the Inquisitor's story about Fen Harrell wonder just how large the Dreadwolf's forces were. So it doesn't explicitly say Dalish elves go, but we have people with Dalish markings right here and what the ancient Elven rebel had planned. So I don't know if some of the Dalish would go or not. Like, would my clan have gone, you know? Would my clan go, just up and disappear? Like, surely some of them wouldn't agree with Solus, you know? Forever mocked. Oh, that's Dorian! I didn't know Dorian was gonna be with me! Oh my gosh! My agents have found nothing. With the illusions, he could be anywhere. I didn't know. I didn't know you're. With the Inquisition, <gasps> the fittest That's awesome. Disbanded. We have no army, no formal alliances. We have what we truly need. <sighs> we will need to be careful. Solus knows everything about us: who we are, how we work, our strengths. And I did not realize that. Then we find people he doesn't. Oh, that's so cool! We will stop Solus by any means necessary. Ah. See, look, you see the Solus right there? Right next to the dagger? It says the little town Solus. Oh, man, that was good. That was good. I like that too, where the Talon's like, we will stop him by any means necessary. Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. I think it is the cell where I was a prisoner. You go back to the beginning again, basically. Trespasser takes you in. It's a full circle. It takes you back to the beginning. Whatever's left of Haven, that cell is apparently still there. Yeah, it's where we started the game, yep. through for a bit, right? To get to Cassandra's little daily walk. Man, that was so cool, the door. I, to I told you Dorian would come visit me. <laughs> I love that, that's awesome. That was cool. Man, man, that was awesome. What a good, what a good game, what a good game. My, my second full playthrough of Inquisition. I'm very happy with it. I'm very happy with the way Talon turned out. We need the song to be a bit less dramatic. Yeah, we can't we can't listen to Cassandra's story over uh, over our dramatic, heartbreaking music. That was great. Thank you guys for watching with me. Like. Someday, eventually, this will go up on YouTube, but it's been really fun to play it with you guys. I'm glad, because I, and I wanted to get it done, and so I'm glad you guys were chill with me playing this on stream. So it was fun. I appreciate it. Good times, good times. Mm -hmm. A blast. Thank you guys. It's been fun. Come on, Cassandra, start reading your story. Now we're all just sitting what here. Is there this? we go. A new book? <laughs> all this shit is weird. <laughs> oh, Verk, that is a terrible title. <laughs> what are you even thinking? I churned like a rolling sea on a dark and stormy night, centered on a gaping is, hole that He did led not put his best effort into writing nowhere. this story. A hole that spit up many things that day, comets, demons, and a whole lot of trouble. <gasps> it's about the Inquisition. <gasps> the tavern cut the silence like it owed the carter money in the middle in her element red jenny she looked me up and down mostly down not playing weirdy she said 
gesturing with and dismissively eating a sandwich. Don't write that. Seriously, piss up a <laughs> Eric Cassandra's Sarah accent. Made the subtext text, which suited me. Oh, Eric Cassandra in her accent doing really good impersonations of everybody else's accents and speech mannerisms is the court top notch. Swirled into the room like a drop of beautiful poison spreading in a wine glass. She sized me up with a glance. I am Madame de Fair, the most terrifying person you shall ever meet. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, the voice actress must have had a blast with this. Cassandra reading books reminds me of, of me reminds you of me when the I'm young emotional. Folded <laughs> Alphonse in an embrace as warm as a serpent's kiss. I always knew I could count on your support. I always knew! The Count did not feel the bite of her poisoned dart until it was too late. Even if it requires your death. Your death! <laughs> your death! <laughs> oh, you should totally, Kai, you should totally do that. Oh, yeah. Drops of rain glistened on the griffin medallion grasped tightly in Blackwall's hand. The silver-eyed wings of valor, they mean, nothing. they mean nothing. He flung the medal to the cold and uncaring ground. You don't know what I've done. You <laughs> don't, don't know. know me. <laughs> <sighs> so romantic. <laughs> I feel like Cassandra or Blackwell could have possibly gotten together at some point. Just because he is that, like... He's that like cold, dark anti-hero, like but with the heart of gold. Like a knife, a shadow wearing a hat where dreams came to die. It's a riddle. It's a riddle. A cold riddle that gnaws at your mind, <laughs> but you'll feel better when it's gone. <laughs> that makes as much sense as anything cold. Oh says. my gosh, she's doing such a good job! Founding fathers for the horse Would you education. Place your herald above the law, ambassador. Whose law, my lady? <laughs> Josephine's eyes glittered like angry opals. The law destroyed <laughs> by rebellion, by civil war, by poor fiscal management. management. We are the law. We are the law. Our mark on adamant, but the dust hadn't settled, and neither had hard. Nice. I can offer you a drink if I catch your meaning. If you'd caught my meaning, <gasps> you'd have offered a double. <laughs> what is even happening? Yeah, this is just Take it back, Castle. Oh, okay. I think she'd have a romantic view of Blackwall, though. Like, at, after a the while, you know what I mean? The was a great slab of muscle with horns that could hang a tapestry. One eye scanned for threats, while the other hid behind an eye patch like a chantry sister's old sins. Come on, he barked, not looking back as he entered. The dancer with the great rack comes on in five. <laughs> That is spot on. Spot on, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can't really see Cass falling for Blackwall, but I could see how she would see him as a romantic figure, like in the capital the R romance had the sense. look of a Templar who had seen the worst of humanity, yet still, <laughs> yet still had the time to style him. <laughs> this isn't just a war, he said, his gaze steely like a dull blade. It's the only one. It's the only one. Colin. That's Colin. That's Colin. <laughs> the mage wore a class of handsome sneer cultivated by a thousand years of Tevinter elitism. The name's Dorian. He glared. D O R. D O R. <laughs> Spell it right, you marble headed lump, or it's toad time. <gasps> a toad? 
That's hardly credible. That's hardly credible. I know, right? Dorian wouldn't have said that. <laughs> Old elf spun, mage staff crackling like the city after a good man's murder. You're crazy, the Red Templar cried in terror. Moonlight glinted off ears like the knives you never see coming. Better to fade out than burn away. <laughs> oh, yeah, burn. Burn. Oh. <laughs> Wait, where am I? Uh, I don't... Oh, here it is. Here it is. The seeker clutched <laughs> at my vest, her tears as desperate as they were pitiful. Varric, I was wrong about everything, she sobbed. Could you find it in your noble heart to forgive me? That dwarf, he... He... He, he put me in the book. <laughs> She's I am reading the shit out of this. <laughs> She's the best. Cassandra's the best. Oh, disgusted noise. That's what you would expect, right? But no, she's so excited to be in the book. Oh, yes. Bear your blade and raise it high, the Dragon Age team. You guys did great. Dragon Age team did great. They're fantastical. Couldn't be happier. Cast marry me! <laughs> Yay! We did it! Oh my gosh! And now with all the stuff we synced across accounts, uh, my next playthrough will be with Erica and anybody else will have a bunch of cool stuff. I don't know when I'll get to the Erica playthrough. Maybe that one might not actually come until Dragon Age 4 is announced and like a release date is sort of incoming, you know? Depending on how much free time I have. Uh, your internet just came- Ashley, no! We just finished! Well, you can definitely watch the replay. <laughs> but yeah, we just got back. Uh, lots of things changed, actually. Things, things did not go exactly- At least one particular thing did not go exactly how I thought it would. So that was interesting. I liked it. See, that's why that's why I want to play through all the other games and make custom world states that way instead of just like making something up on Dragon's Keep because I want to be able cuz sometimes in the moment your character has progressed in a way that you're not quite you didn't quite anticipate and their actions change. So yes. I do, someday, eventually, uh, privately, I want to play Talon through again with a custom world state. But I say that, right? But these ga this game takes, what, like, we spent over 200 hours in this? Let's hang on, let's see. Okay, we spent 134 hours uh, total in this, in Talon's playthrough. All right, there's, there's been a, I have to go pick somebody up, but anyway. We were at the end, so that's good. But yeah, we were level 27, 134 hours, including all the DLC. So, um, but yes. <laughs> you want to see someone do a speed run of this game? I can't even, like, it would take so much planning to do a speed run. Oh. oh, don't just leave the dog in here. Oh my gosh, this is just a great way to end it. There's a certain amount of things you have to do, but you'd have to like plan it out to like, like really hardcore. I wonder if there is a speed run online. That'd be kind of cool to watch. And <laughs> doggo, yay! Yeah, turn them off. <laughs> you have to use Dragon Keep since you can't play Dragon Age 2. Yeah, 130 hours well spent. It really was. It really was. I really enjoyed playing Talon and Dorian's romance was great. It was all good. It was all great. So. 
thank you guys so much. Thank you so much for the people on YouTube, for people on Twitch. Thank you so much for watching this, especially because I've already played through Inquisition once, and there were so many people who were interested in seeing a second playthrough with a different character, and there's so many of you who were interested in me in seeing me go back and replaying Erica with my own canon setup. So someday that will happen, but I cannot say when. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> but I really appreciate everybody. I really appreciate everybody and, and everything, all the support for everything. So, thank you. Thank you so much. It was super fun to play as Talon. And to have a lover who didn't immediately run off. You know what I mean? Holy crap. Kayuk, three and a half hours. Is that? No, not even. Two hours and 50 minutes. Nightmare difficulty speed run. Wow. Well, there you go, Ashley. That's insane. The Inquisition speedrun world record. Jeez Louise, that's insane. <sighs> but yeah, it has, it's been loads of fun. So thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. I don't know how to say it any, just thank you. I wish I had better, more descriptive words. 